Hey, it's Emrandom101, and today I have another Japanese manga haul. This time around, I have two super cool dystopian cyberpunk manga. Both of these series are very just action packed and kind of dark and moody. They have a very interesting vibe and aesthetic. Starting off, I have the complete series for No Gun's Life, volumes 1 to 13. And under the dust jacket, all of the volumes kind of look the same, nothing too fancy. This also comes with color spread pages, so that's fun, or just color pages. Yes, this guy on the front is the main character, and he has a revolver gun for his head. I'm not going to show the backs anymore since it seems to just be the same thing mostly. Okay, this volume also had a color spread, but it was um, a little bit more difficult to find, so there you go. Sorry for the glare, whatever. And I'm going to show off some of the artwork from this. This is like a kind of like a one-shot extra story, so it shouldn't really have any spoilers or stuff like that. As you can see, it's just super cool. Very intense with the action and... The main character looks so, so cool. In general, the character designs in this are top tier and very fun and playful and unique and different. I guess I'll just stop with this. Then we have volume three with Mary on the cover. She is just a mechanic or an engineer. Volume four. I really enjoy the color scheme that the author goes for, and also the neon lettering is a nice touch on the volume design overall, so yeah. Volume 5. Let me not forget about the color page. Volume 6. Really just cool artwork. I can't get over it. I just love the lighting. The, the vibe of this manga is so, so unique. Volume 7. This is the main cast of characters, by the way. These three over here. So I guess I should show off that the artwork on this dust jacket kind of extends. Volume 8. And yes, the dust jacket for this one also kind of extends. And uh, speaking of extends, basically humans that have body modifications are called extends. Now with the war being finished, a lot of them are just kind of left over. And with this, the main character, Juzo Inui, opens up a office or an agency where he deals with cases related to extends that maybe go wild and stuff like that. Mary looking good. Volume 10. Very cool cover. I guess this one kind of uh, also wraps around. Man, that's cool. Volume 11. And I feel like this one also kind of slightly extends. There you go. And the Super cool color page. Volume 12. Oh man, this is also just wow. I just really enjoy how the neon colors are mixed in so flawlessly. And the final volume, 13. Quite a thick one. Next up we have Colorless. It's currently ongoing and the sixth volume is going to release soon, I think. These are the two main characters, Avidia and Chia. Uh, this is a super just fun, action-packed manga. The whole premise and idea behind it is just genius. I really just like how this manga just plays around with the artistic medium that it is a part of. With manga, you know, it's typically just black and white. In the case of this manga, it mixes up just the medium of manga and the fact that it is black and white mostly with the story 
aspect, which is super fascinating. And it really just makes the raiding experience much more immersive and just fun. Basically, all of the colors in the world disappeared after there was a gigantic solar flare. Due to this, humans are quite deformed and the population is on a heavy decline. As you can see, this is what humans kind of look like. Not very human-like, basically. And relating to what I was saying earlier, in the world, there still are some remnants of color and they actually have special powers behind them. Typically, they are used to fight and stuff like that. And it's kind of hard to see here. Um, I feel like in the digital format, it just pops off way more. But basically, whenever the remnants of color are used, they are also displayed in the manga. And it's really just cool to see different shades of color just kind of like pop through the black and white. And I don't know, it's just such, such a cool idea. I wish more manga would experiment around with uh, fun stuff like that, to be honest. Here you can see the green a little bit better. I'll try to show some examples from other volumes too with different colors, but yeah. I'm really in love with the art style for the manga. Like overall, it's super, super cool. I just love the very intense black and white shading and, you know, No Guns Life also just had intense shading in the art style, so. I was very happy to come across both of these manga since they very much appeal to what I like. Volume 2. Okay, under the dust jacket you have this. Very detailed sketches or character design sheets, cool. And Volume 3. Man, I just love a good cyberpunk manga, and I feel like we do not get very much of that, um, to be honest. Yeah, you have older classics and stuff, but when it comes to newer series in the style, it's not that common, so that's unfortunate. Okay, here is another example of just the colors kind of appearing. It's very creative. The only other time where I've seen this done is typically in like um, web serialization rom-com manga where maybe the characters have their eyes colored in and stuff like that. And even this manga, Colorless, is a web serialization by a more obscure publication company from what I remember. Okay, here's another example of the colors making an appearance. In this case, it's a little bit more intense and I guess straight up you have color pages too. Volume 5. Okay, this volume is pretty heavy on the colors. Let's just put it that way. Okay, here is a quick overview shot with all of the volumes, and thanks for watching. Bye!